Hi, everyone. Hi. I hope everyone is having a great week. We are coming to you from a very rainy and cool New York. Um, thanks so much for calling in. It looks like we have uh, a nice uh, amount of people um, joining us today with an, for another exciting open discussion. And today we have a very special guest, Lindsay Bressler, who actually is the head of the entire Open Sky Marketplace. And she's kind of, you know, one of the visionaries behind um, its inception and everything that it is today. Um, so she's excited to talk to you guys about some, some great things that, you know, how the marketplace came to be, where it's going, and, you know, how to do Open Sky. She's been with us for about two years, so she's, you know, this big force in the company that, you know, we love to work with. So, I will give it to Lindsay, and then after um, Lindsay's done talking, we'll take questions again. Um, so, Lindsay? Great. It's yours. Great. Um, thanks, Will Hunt, and thank you to everyone who called in. Um, it's been a busy week for us here, and I'm sure it's been a busy week for everyone on the phone as well. Um, you thought I thought it would be helpful to give you know, just some background to, um, you know, both my career, uh, my experience at Open Sky, and really how we came to the place where we are today, um, to give everyone a little bit of that context and, and sort of inside look. Um, and I actually would love to spend most of today um, doing Q&A, because I think it would, just be, would be really fascinating for me personally to just look. Um, engage with you all and, and hear about your experience and your thoughts and, and how you kind of see Open Skies Marketplace um, fit in with your with your businesses as well. So, you know, I started here two years ago, as Will Hunt said. Uh, before that, I actually worked for one of the investors of Open Sky um, on the finance side. And one of the things that was really exciting for me um, when I came over from finance and actually took an operating role with the company was the ability to work with John Kaplan, our founder and CEO, who you may have had a chance to hear on the phone last week, um, but also uh, the ability to work at a company that was incredibly innovative in the commerce area, um, and we have uh, continued to, to do that throughout the course of the two years that I've been here. And so, you know, as, as some of you know, the Open Sky Project was originally founded in 2009 as a, as a blogger e-commerce network. And what we did effectively in 2009 was really white label our product and services to bloggers who wanted to put products within their own blog sites. And that was a really interesting experiment because we were way ahead of our time in sort of blending this commerce and content idea. And it effectively didn't work out for us at scale in 2009, and part of that was because we were a little bit ahead of our time. But the other reason for that, which I think we're seeing tons of examples of to, in today's environment as well, is that if, there's, if you're in an environment that's primarily a content-driven environment where consumers are coming to consume content and potentially engage with other people, but for the most part have a passive experience in consuming content, Consumers don't necessarily have their credit cards out in their hands ready to make a purchase on within that experience. And so we found it difficult to drive conversion within blogs themselves because the blogs were places where people were going without their credit card just to read about a really interesting story or someone's personal experience. And so what we decided to do in, in 2010 and early 2011 was pivot to an actual destination commerce site because we believed, and knock on wood, it's, it's worked for us so far, uh, that if you create a commerce site where you have a membership base and a fan base and most importantly, a customer base who's coming with the explicit intent that there will ultimately, hopefully, be a transaction at the end of their experience, and then you put some content around it to kind of enhance the conversion and the experience of that, that is arguably sort of a better experience for the shopper and a better experience for uh, the people who are selling the product as well. And so that, to us, was, was sort of the pivotal moment and as a company in having the courage to kind of recognize that what we were doing 
sort of the inverse of what we what we do today. What we were doing in 2009 wasn't necessarily um, panning out to be everything we hoped it would be, and sort of having the courage to, to pivot, and luckily having that pivot um, work to our advantage was was really fascinating. And and so in 2011 we launched as OpenSky.com, what you know of today, um, and we've evolved over time from a place that was more of a closed door retail platform to a true marketplace. And so, and the way that we actually made that journey was really interesting, um, which was when we launched in April 2011, we launched with a core group of insiders and tastemakers and influencers in different categories. And we believed that by having an insider or an influencer like a Bobby Flay or somebody love a, an, a product from a small business owner, and having that person sort of seal of approval on that product, that would more likely incent our customers and our members to purchase that product within our site. And while that was incredibly helpful in getting us to stand up a business, as we looked more and more at the data that was coming out about our members and our customers and who they were following and what they were purchasing, the data was incredibly compelling. And, and what I mean by that is, Members and customers, and our most active members and customers, were following not just five people or ten people, but 30 people within the platform to get product recommendations from them. And they were buying not just in one category, but across multiple categories. And, and I'm sure that, um, many, as many of you know, our repeat buying rate on the platform is incredibly high. Um, we are over 60, 65% of our customers are repeat buyers. And of those people, uh, well over 70% of them shop across categories as well. And so when we were looking at our customer and our member data, what was really interesting to us was that our demand for products and for amazing, unique items from small businesses and the stories that surround those products actually far exceeded the supply of products that we had and the people who delivered them to our customers. And so, in fact, our customers were coming to Open Sky not for Bobby Flay and not for Martha Stewart, but for what Open Sky stood for, which was the discovery of unique, extraordinary items from people that m make those items with high quality and care. And so in, let's say, the fall of last year, we really decided that as the best way to sort of complete the shopping circle for our members and for everyone within our community was to actually open up the tool set that we were using to publish products on our own internally and open them up to you all, to small business owners who could actually open up their own store, engage with customers directly. Our customers and members would ha then have the opportunity to discover thousands and tens of thousands of more products from Open Sky and its partners um, and really kind of complete the shopping circle by shopping with your friends, shopping with people that influence you and inspire you, and also shopping with with the experts and the people that, that make the goods. Um, and you know, so far, and as I'm sure Will Hunt has conveyed to you all, um, we've had tremendous traction within our marketplace. Since we officially launched on May 1st, we've had over, I think I checked this morning, it was over 3,140 people that have started to create their stores and that have opened their businesses within our platform. Um, and so we are uh, incredibly humble, humbled by that um, and incredibly grateful uh, to everyone who's sort of taken the time to you know, invest and learn about the marketplace that we've built. Um, and our response from our customers and our members has just been phenomenal, which is sort of um, you know, as much as the most we could really ask for and sort of as we think about connecting um, buyers and sellers together. Uh, so that is, that is a very high level um, sort of overview of, of how we got to where we are today. Um, you know, as Wilhelm told you, we are continuing to iterate um, very rapidly on the tools that we are providing to small business owners. Um, we are 
constantly, um, daily, hourly, looking at the emails that come in to us that you send to Will Hunt personally, the emails that come in to us on merchanthelp at opensky.com. Um, we also have a team of, of individuals here who are product experts in, in every category that we cover um, who are constantly talking to people like yourselves um, all day. And we have actually daily 915 uh, stand-up meetings where we synthesize a lot of the feedback that we've heard and we prioritize um, how that feedback is actually going to get baked into the tool set um, that we have provided you guys so far and how we can make that even more compelling um, and an even more rich experience for you. Um, so one of the things that um, you know we're looking at constantly is you know how can we provide easier ways for you to set up your store, easier ways for you to add products, easier ways for you to fulfill your orders, um, easier ways for you to engage and connect with your fans and customers on OpenSky, easy, easier ways for you to grow your audience on OpenSky from outside of OpenSky, so giving you links and services and tools to be able to do that. Um, and we're really trying to look at things from a holistic perspective uh, to, make, to make the experience the best it can be for, for you all as merchants um, and the experience the best it can be for our customers and members and fans of your brands as well. So I, I know that's, I don't know, maybe 12 or 13 minutes. I know I'll pause there because I did want to spend the majority of time um, doing Q&A and really hearing your feedback and questions that you have um, that we might be able to help answer uh, and make the most effective use of everyone's time. So, so if you have questions, just um, dial star six and I'll be able to tell that you have a question. Um, then um, we'll feed them off to Lindsay. Give us, give us all, any and all of your questions um, because you know we're eager to answer them. So um, we do have one question now from GSC Products. So um, go ahead with your question. Uh, yes, I was wondering if, for merchants, is there going to be a way to set up our own coupon po codes for our own followers that could like be used on top of regular Open Sky discounts? So we could kind of like send that out to our followers and say, hey, you know, here's a special coupon code that you'll be able to, you know, input in your in your order to kind of entice people to come in over a weekend or whatever. Yes. Yeah, so we are in the process of early work um, brainstorming around what we're going to call our promotions tab, which will be a new tab in your merchant toolkit that will allow you, um, we haven't officially decided on sort of the range of options yet, but coupon codes are definitely in the bucket of what's possible. Um, other things we've talked about are being able to temporarily set your prices on some of your products to a different price for a certain period of time. So let's say you wanted to run a sale on Mondays on two or three of your items, you'd be able to do that um, directly within your toolkit and without actually having to click and go through every single item um, and have it be an incredibly manual process. So we're, we're brainstorming a ton of different ways to allow you all to basically program different promotional experiences within your store, whether that's coupon codes or other other forms of discounts. Um, we are in very sort of early stages in planning that. I'm hoping that that will come out within the next couple of weeks. Um, the other piece of that that we are working through is then how do we actually showcase that on the site and in the user experience and in our emails. So. From a user's perspective, does that do those promotions show up on our Explore page? Do we have a different tag where consumers are able to filter by products that have either some sort of promotion that's associated with it, or do we allow um, different people access to different levels of products? Um, the other piece of that is how do we program it in our emails? So let's say, let's say. I think your specific example of sending a coupon code directly to your customers is sort of is one great way to do that. Um, the other way that we were thinking about it as well is if you wanted to, let's say, have your store be a certain percentage off for a very limited time, 
you could contact potentially someone on our retail team, you could contact Will Hunt, he would inform the people who make our emails on our editorial team and we might be able to feature you in an email. Um, and so those are all kind of ways that we want to start getting really creative around, to, exactly to your point, um, engaging your fans on another incremental level um, to, to what we currently offer today. So to a short answer to your question is absolutely yes. All right. Um, we have another question from Sandra Goldshine. Sandra, you can go ahead with your question. Oh, I'm so sorry. Hi, this is Nancy, not oh, Sandra. Sorry. It was and, your, um, Sandra, I apologize. That's okay. You know what? It's, it's, it's Sandra's my wife, and we live in Brooklyn. So uh, oh. here we go. So uh, we, we love Open Sky. You know, we've been uh, we we were um, endorsed by Gabrielle Bernstein when that was more of the format. And I have just a three part question, and I'll I'll make it really easy so that I'm not overwhelming anyone. Um, I'm looking at the feed now, and I'm 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 seeing that like people say, oh, you know, uh, Martha endorsed this, and you know, Bobby endorsed this, and you'll love this, and you know. Um, and I know I see all these stores coming in. You know, one of my my concerns is, look, the more the merrier. But I know that, like, with a site like Etsy, I, I can't, I can't, I have so much trouble now going to Etsy because there's just so much, you know. And do you, have you sort of addressed the, the not concern, because it's great, the more, the more you have, the better, but at some point, um, does it get sort of unwieldy for the for the user if there are too many stores? And then, just the second question is a quick one: is um, I I love the feed, you know, I, I, it's tricky. But is there will there ever be a way where we'll have a, a limited opportunity to actually um, get? a message to our followers if we wanted to say to them, for instance, you know, today we're offering 20% off everything in our store. If we put it in the feed, you know, the feed can sometimes move really quickly if a lot of people are putting stuff in the feed. So is there ever a way to connect to our followers? And then there was the question of sort of saturation. Is it... Um, it, can anyone uh, open up a store on Open Sky, and 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 might that at some point just create, you know, sort of like this little bit of chaos for people? Great. Um, okay, so I'll take I'll take your question sort of one at a time. And actually, I think your first question and your third question um, are are very similar. Um, so I'll hopefully answer those both, you know, in parallel. So in terms of our customer experience and, and you know how we look at adding new merchants into the platform and how we end up relaying that information to the customers. Um, every merchant that comes into Open Sky is approved by a staff member within the Open Sky team. So whenever somebody is creating their store, we have and we trust me, we have watched this like a hawk. Um, we have a system internally here where we can go in and look at um, somebody's store and look at what products they have start to set up, what their store is like, what other information they're going to be providing to consumers to make sure that the products that we're offering to people um, are of high quality and they don't dilute the experience per se. Um, and so I think in terms of in terms of saturation, you know, we would we would love nothing more than to have tens of thousands of merchants within Open Sky, um, but I think it needs to be the right people, and the right, especially today mm -hmm. and early on, the right people who can provide high quality product, great content to fans, and really be contributing members of the community and be supporters of the people that are already here. Um, so we we actively look for that, um, and we pretty openly tell merchants when they're not a good fit for us. We've had some people come in who um, don't necessarily make products from what we can tell from the photography um, that's super high quality, um, that is produced and photographed with, with love and care. Um, and if in those cases, we'll either ask 
them to send us a sample, a physical sample, so we can see for ourselves kind of what the quality looks like, or we might actually refer them to a different commerce site that might be a better fit for them. Um, on the other end of that spectrum, what has been really interesting for us is that we've also had pretty big name institutional brands that want to open up stores on Open Sky. So, um, you know, in, in confidence, like Whirlpool, for example, wanted to open up a store on Open Sky and offer KitchenAid products. And we have also similarly not accepted those people into the platform as well, um, because I think what's, what's the most important thing for us is to maintain a community of like-minded small businesses that are passionate and care about each other and the, and the products that they create and the engagement and the connections that they have with their fans. And so um, in terms of the quality and the, and the saturation level of the platform, you know, I think we're, it's something that we are um, acutely aware of and, and really actively monitoring. From an experience side, from a customer perspective, What's really interesting about our experience, and, and Wilhelm can even talk a little bit more about some of, the features, some of the new features that came out this week, the way that our experience works in terms of, and how the, in, in sort of, comp, basically in tandem with how our product catalog will end up scaling over time as we add more merchants, is it's a dual-pronged experience. So for a very novice user who's coming into Open Sky and doesn't really know, you know, sort of the full background of the company or is referred to by a friend, there's basically two experiences. The first is our Explore page, which is effectively a great way for somebody to look at our entire product catalog and understand kind of what's trending, be able to filter by what's most popular or best selling or newest products in every category or in stores in every category. Um, and it's a way for somebody to drill down deep into the catalog if they wanted to, to shop and search that way. Um, and that is a little, is, it's probably the most parallel experience that we have to some place like Etsy where it's again kind of a drill down uh, more traditional kind of marketplace experience. The thing that makes Open Sky really unique um, and where we actually see more of the activity especially from our active members is within somebody's feed and so the feed is great for users because as the product catalog scales your feed is only going to scale as much as you want to engage with the community. So if I become a super active member and I want to connect to 50 or 100 stores, I'll see the activity of those stores and the activity of my friends engaging in the community within my feed. But when, whether Open Sky has 10,000 merchants or 100,000 merchants, my feed is only as sort of saturated um, and cluttered as I want to make it be. And so, you know, I, uh, it'll be really interesting, I think, to see how, as we scale as a business, how our user community engages with the feed and programs their feeds. Like, I know early on in Twitter there were those unfollow Fridays where everyone kind of unfollowed people on Twitter that they realized they didn't necessarily want. And I even have that experience to some extent today as well. You know, um, Will Hunt and I were friends on Open Sky, but to be honest, we don't necessarily have the same shopping taste. And so I might decide that I want to unfollow him in my feed, and I could still see, I can still discover and dig into the product catalog of Open Sky if I ever want to on the Explore page, but the feed to me is the most personal and relevant information, and that um, is something that, you know, will hopefully elegantly. Uh, be able to maintain its integrity as we scale, um, which I think will be really interesting. And then the last question, or, or sort of the second question that you had about the feed itself, and if there's ever sort of a way for you to communicate directly with your followers, I'll let Will Hunt actually talk a little bit about a new feature that we rolled out this week, um, which will be helpful to you all as you think about engaging with your customers, and then we can talk a little bit more about what some of the long-term plans are for that. So what we've rolled out this week is a very kind of beginner beta version of something that is going to, in its, um, you know, as we grow it, going to be a very robust way of communicating with your followers, communicating with other merchants, 
communicating with your friends on Open Sky. Um, if you have noticed, if you go to your feed page, there's now a status bar at the top of your of your page. And um, if you're a merchant, it says, you know, what are you loving or something to that effect. Um, if you're just a member, it says share something with your friends. And in that, you can type a message just as you would in Facebook and click post, and it will then show up in all of the feeds of the people that are following you, all of your, you know, quote unquote friends on Open Sky. At the same time, there's a, a little icon that's a camera that will allow you to upload an image as well. Also with this, um, it kind of expanding on the features, you can um, paste YouTube clips, Vimeo clips, you can paste um, Instagram um, URLs, um, and all of that input content will be uh, um, catapulted or um, pushed into the feed. Um, at the same time, on the other end of the spectrum, if you're using Facebook, if you're using Twitter, if you're using Instagram as tools, social media tools to get messages to your um, to your customer base, any time that you do that, if you post on Facebook, if you post on Twitter, if you post on Instagram, and you hashtag Open Sky, your that post will then be pushed into your Open Sky feed. Now, in order to do that, you need to go into your account settings, into your member account settings, and you need to be able, you need to link those accounts to Open Sky. And if you have any questions with that, I'm happy to walk you through that. But it's in it's in the account settings portion of your of your um, Open Sky page. But this is a really, really neat way of in really kind of you know one-on-one -on -one engaging with your with your followers. You can also direct message your follow not not a, not really direct message, but if you know a follower that you want to send a message to, if you at so and so, my my Open Sky slug is W H Lewis. If you at W H Lewis, put a message in, then that comes to, directly to me. So there are all of these new ways that we are our, our team is building out to be able to code to allow you to correct to correct to connect directly with your followers share new products and you know um, I've noticed some of the merchants are already using this there's a merchant that's on the platform that sells wall art and because I am following that merchant I didn't know this but yesterday she posted a comment um, on in her feed that she had introduced a new collection or a new type of, of, of art and had I not been checking her store every day, I wouldn't have seen that. But because she posted that, I clicked into that um, into that post and saw this, you know, new breadth of product that's, you know, a different type of product that she'd added to her store. And I knew that just because she had posted that. Um, so it's going to be a really, really cool way for you to get new product up, communicate directly with your with your um, followers, and you know, like you know, if you're running a promotion, if you want to, you know, set your uh, shipping prices to zero for a couple of days, you just post, you know, hey, free shipping in, you know, Will's Cupcake Store for the next two days. Check it out. Click here, and um, you know, it's an exciting, it's, a, it's an exciting rollout that we've um, we're really excited about, and it's just going to get better as we you know, continue to improve it. But if you do have questions about that, um, you can contact me directly. Just send me an email. You should all have my email. If not, it's wlewis at opensky.com, and I'm happy to, to walk you through those features. All right, um, we have another question. Um, I don't have your name, but this question um, is from the phone number um, and with the area code 321. It's the only area code in 321. So if your question, um, area code 321, go ahead and say your name and what um, merchant you are. How you guys doing? I'm Daniel from the Smart Baker. Um, Quick question regarding, I guess, maybe some bugs that might be known uh, or if I'm just experiencing something here. So I just set up the store, I believe, the day before yesterday. Uh, this morning I had my two first orders through it. Um, went ahead, took a look at them, fulfilled them, but I see that I, on the products I have our shipping cost on there. But in the orders, both these orders do not have any shipping added into the order. Um, so I'm curious if that's maybe a bug uh, or something I'm not f known with, if these um, customers get free shipping through OpenSky for being a valued member or something. Um, and then I guess kind of a compound question on top of that, is there going to be a more robust kind of shipping 
cost calculation thing. Um, since we are located in Florida, our costs to California are much higher than they are to you know North Carolina. So I know you win some, you lose some as far as the shipping costs go, but wasn't sure if it's going to be a more uh, real-time calculation system I- involved in that. Okay, first I'll address the, um, your first question and then we can go into the, um, and we can both kind of talk about okay. the tiered shipping. So there could be several uh, ways that that customer could have received free shipping even though you had set a, set a shipping cost. If you go into your toolkit, there is an option under detail. If you go into account and then details and scroll down, there are two of our kind of member um, rewards things. One is a rewards credit thing, one is a rewards credit program, and one is a free shipping program. Now, the free shipping program, if you opt into that, when OpenSky offers free shipping, which we do at some times, we always will alert you when we do this beforehand. But if we offer a day of free shipping, if you've opted into the program, then your members will, your uh, the people that purchase from you will receive free shipping. Now we haven't done that in a while, so another way that this could have happened is if the purchase was over $125. If the purchase was over $125 and you're opted into free shipping, then at any time, if anyone can make a purchase that's over that and you, the customer will receive um, free shipping. One other way that they could have received free shipping is that the customer is a Sapphire member. So if a customer is a Sapphire member, they've earned over 60,000 points on OpenSky. Now, there's a very small percentage of the two and a half million, three million members of OpenSky that are Sapphire members. No, you, it's like it's one. a couple hundred. Yeah, there are a couple of hundred members out of the three million that are Sapphire members. But Sapphire members receive free shipping all the time. So those are that's there are three different ways that could have happened. I'm happy to, to go offline after we're done and look into see which um, which you know. Okay, that'd that. be great. We can talk about it, um, and um, you know I'll I'll get more in depth into it. So I'll take that offline. The second question you asked is about the tiered shipping. Um, that is something that we're looking into right now. Each product has a separate shipping cost. Um, but our operations team is looking into different ways um, to improve that. Um, you know, first item is seven ninety five. Second item is is you know three dollars. Third item, and so on and so forth. So that is something that's co- that is coming down the road. But for now, we are doing you know a, a, a shipping price per item. That's, um, that's flat, based. That's and we're flat. and and to Wilhelm's point, we're also exploring because I think you had mentioned. Um, geographical dyn- dynamics as well. So we're also exploring that op- as an option um, that will hopefully sort of happen in the coming months. One thing we have done, we did, we are, we're exploring both of those. We've done some research um, and compared our, you know, some kind of market, you know, analysis that as far as customer experience goes, a lot of sites that offer geographical shipping, you do not know your shipping cost until you've actually carted and then you begin the checkout process. So sometimes that's a little um, you know, off-putting to some con- to, to members because they want to know what the shipping cost is um, before they add it to cart or you know, before they actually have to begin checking out. But that is something that we're, we're, we're kind of weighing all options at this point. So there will be something put into place um, as we go down the line. All right, um, we have another question um, from GSC Products. Hi, you, are you guys there? Is that me, GSC Products? That's, that's you, GSC Products. Okay. If, you, if you could tell Here's us your my, name. Oh, my name is Wayne. How you guys doing? Hi. Um, my question is, um, when will you have, uh, or are you, I'm sure you're going to implement this, but when will you have um, availability to, like, real-time reporting within a merchant's dashboard, um, you know, showing us, you know, dollars in sales, you know, the commissions paid, you know, et cetera, just kind of real-time reporting so we know which products we're selling the most of and, and how much we made in a certain amount of time, and you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so we are – actually in the process this week today of finalizing uh, what we what we are calling the payments page in the dashboard Um, that will be hopefully live I would like to say within the next two weeks and on that page 
that will be around payments specifically. So you'll be able to download a CSV of your most recent pay, uh, payment file. We do payments on the 10th and the 25th of every month. And so from that perspective, you'll be able to get access to that itemized selling data, um, including sort of the item that you've sold, the price that you sold it at, the quantity of items that were sold, et cetera. Um, and and we we'll break it down, you know, as far as, you know, so you'll be able to easily look at, say, because we have like right now about 22 different products up there. So, mm -hmm. well, well, it kind of break it down to make it easy so we can say, okay, this product we sold 15 of, that product we sold 10 of. Yeah, it will be it'll be completely itemized. We've done this um, with some pretty explicit feedback from one of our merchants who actually has an accounting degree. Uh, so she she was pretty um, specific with us in you know you know what we think needs to be included in that in order for you guys to have all the right information um, and easy, easily access that information in order to, one, just analyze how your store is performing within the platform, but also to reconcile that for accounting purposes. And so that is something that will, is um, imminently coming. Right. And then the other, piece of, the other piece of your question is around other real-time reporting. And we do have plans over the next kind of three months to roll out reporting that is um, a little bit more socially based in nature as well. So for example, um, really aggregating, you know, sort of at a nice level through charts and graphs and all that kind of fun stuff around page views of your store, number of customers that you have over time. Um, so you can start to see kind of where you're trending on all the key metrics that are, that are important to you. Um, and that's something that'll be is it on a little bit longer of a timeline than the payments tab, but will be coming as well. That's terrific, and I have to get back to work, but I just want to say one thing. I think you guys have really, are really on to something here. You've created something that I think is a monster here, and uh, keep up the good work of what you're doing and dealing with the, uh, the merchants and the customers on both sides because I think it's going to become one of the biggest things ever. So Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks so, so much. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Um, okay, any more questions? Um, those are really, really good questions. I'm glad everyone was so, you know, engaged and, and Lindsay's done amazing at, you know, giving, um, sharing her wealth of knowledge. Um, so, um, you know, any other questions, we're happy to answer them. Um, if not, oh, I have a question. Thank you. It's, this is um, actually from area code 805. You're the only 805, so if you could tell us your name and your um, um, company. Hi, it's Jeff Rains, and the company is Revolve slash RTNA. From a consumer standpoint, shopper standpoint, are you going to drill down the categories? Yeah. Um, so one of, actually one of the biggest meetings I have later today is I'm meeting with our director of user experience on taxonomy. Um, so we have a, the way that our explore page worked when it was first rolled out a couple of weeks ago is that we allowed users to basically look at things by very high level categories, so let's say home, accessories, food, et cetera. Now today, if you go to our explore page, um, one of the things that you'll notice is that we're starting to expose a little bit more of the taxonomy. So let's say you filter today's most popular products in accessories. Once you filter to accessories, what you'll notice underneath all of the different multicolored filters is that there are several tags that actually come up um, sort of floating below that. And you can actually click, as you start to click on each of those tags, you can kind of drill down um, even more. Now this is in, access, in specifically accessories, for example, we only have two sort of levels of taxonomy, right? So you go to general open sky, then you go to accessories, and then you go straight into hats. Um, what we're actually evolving to more is a, even more a little bit more of a traditional drill down experience there where you'd basically be able to go to accessories, shoes, then choose within, once you're within shoes, choose boots or flats or heels, et cetera. Um, accessories, jewelry, then rings, necklaces, bracelets, earrings. Um, and so as, as a user, 
um, I think the most important piece you know, in this experience is for the Explore page to basically be simple enough that a very novice user can come in without really knowing anything about OpenSky and still be able to find great product and, and purchase that product, but also for a lot more of our advanced users to be able to bounce back and forth from the feed to specifically drilling down within the experience to find the exact set of earrings that they'd like. Um, and so that's something that is, uh, I, we're meeting on it today. I would say it'll be finalized hopefully within the next two weeks. Okay. Um, but that was a very timely question, so thank you for, for asking that. Daniel, did you have another question? Uh, yes, I did. Actually, and then I have another issue, I guess, that we need to talk to offline, because now I just sure. see that there was a cancellation on both these orders that I just got. So anyway, um, but on the merchant end side, um, are you guys going to have the option for the merchants to advertise with sponsored results in, in your internal searching? So it's interesting. So we ha we do have a program today where merchants can advertise um, through our direct email. Um, we truthfully have had some real philosophical debates, um, to be quite frank, about whether or not we allow merchants to advertise within search results um, and 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 other areas of the site. Um, and part of that, part of that philosophical debate um, is around, uh, you know, on sort of the one hand, making sure that you all are empowered to um, press the sort of fast forward button on your amplification if you, if you wanted to and, to and to pay for that sort of sponsored advertising. Um, but the other piece of that debate is around the idea that we are a true sort of social marketplace and platform and maintaining sort of the integrity in how search results get shown and, or how things are sorted on the Explore page. Um, you know, it's a really interesting question and I don't think, to be quite honest, I don't know if it's one where we've come to a conclusion on it just yet. Um, so what would be, sorry to cut you off, the basis, I guess, on how you show up you know, how our products would show up in the feed. I mean, obviously there's got to be some sort of relationship to the keywords that the user or the potential customer is entering. Is that just based off of the content and product descriptions, you know, kind of the SEO world of open sky, you know? Um, yeah, so it's a couple different ways. So um, within our search bar specifically, our search bar is powered by Google. So those, uh, the order in which the products show up, if, let's say if you just searched for bracelet or something, is based on more of Google's algorithm than ours. In the feed, it is a time-based system, so it's reverse chronological order of most recent activity down to less recent. Um, and in the explore page, it depends on where your filter is because there's the you have the option basically to sort by most popular, which are the products that have the most loves, um, the best selling product, which are the products that have the most sales for whatever time period you're searching for, or the newest products in whatever time period you're searching for. Um, so it it is it's dependent on really a variety of things. The default setting on the Explore page is most popular. So the default setting is like today's most popular products in all categories. So if you go to the Explore page today and you and as just sort of your primary experience on that page, you're seeing the most popular products today that have that have received the most amount of loves for today. Okay, so it's all about really trying to get your products popular within the social world in order to rank higher in the explorers and in other areas. Yep. Okay. Okay, makes sense. Great. Um, and um, I believe Nancy has another question as well. Nancy, go ahead. Thank you for remembering. It's Nancy. I really appreciate it. So this is a really interesting question. <laughs> okay. This is a real and, and 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 by the way, I would never compare you to that other site, ETSY, because I don't. You know, we love Open Sky. Um, 
But here's a really interesting question, and I think it's a really good question. Um, I noticed, pardon me, um, that have you ever considered um, a category, two categories, one made in the USA and a handmade category? And I noticed that um, because I look at tons of stores, and I noticed that, I mean, we're, we are we are proudly made in Brooklyn, New York, by hand, and we feature that. I notice a lot of stores just say imported, and I'm not criticizing these stores. I, I mean, look, we're all small businesses, and we all are here, and we all have a goal. But, you know, some of this stuff is imported from China, and I'm not anti-China, but, you know, Open Sky to me has much more of a kind of a small business, uh, and, I, and I would suspect most of the products made by the, uh, um, the merchants are made in the United States. That would be my guess. I don't know if you've ever checked or – because I know it doesn't That's seem correct. like – Right. But it, it doesn't seem like it's a requirement because I'm, I'm looking at a store now, and it doesn't matter what store, but I'm looking at the store, and it doesn't say whether it's imported, whether it's made in the, in the United States. Um, is that is that something that's important to, uh, to Open Sky? So short answer is yes, absolutely. Um, you know, we're a company that's founded and startup business based in New York City, um, and, and we're really proud of that. And so, one of the things that's really interesting is we've talked a lot about. Um, exposing geographical location and how we expose that, um, whether it's within your store profile page or and also on the product page itself. Um, it's something that is incredibly important to John, our founder and CEO, um, and incredibly important to us culturally as, as a business to sort of recognize um, where products are from. And I think it also, to be honest, is really interesting for the member to be able to see um, the origin of a particular brand right. or, even, or even one day to be able to filter. Like, I only want to see stores that are from Brooklyn. Or I only right, and if, I, if I'm not on mute, Am I on mute still? No. No. Because, you know, one of the things that we have found a little frustrating is the limited number of characters that we have um, to promote our store. You know, when we, when, we are, when we go into account and we're setting up our store, for instance, you know, we have like 20 characters. Um, so we, we, I put something on that doesn't really – uh, that's not our tagline because our tagline is more than well, than 20 characters. Um, so you know we would we would be so thrilled, for instance, if if on our storefront you know we could have something that it, it says you know made in Brooklyn, New York, because that is really I mean our product is not is it, we could probably sell it for a lot less if we imported it, but we're doing everything we can to to employ people in Brooklyn, New York. And that's something that, you know, is, is a very big selling point for us, and we're not able to really share it with our customers. Yeah, totally understood. Um, I think it's a great point. It's something that is definitely important to us as well, um, and we are, we're talking about how to incorporate that. Um, I think the timing is a little bit TBD, but... Um, mm -hmm. You know, in other, actually, Will Hunt can also talk to. We're actually doing some made in the USA stuff specifically um, coming soon. So, you know, as we are, you know, are diving now head first into summer, um, we've got the Independence Holiday coming up, and we have a, a programming team that's putting together these great, you know, different, um, different um, ways of messaging our collections and messaging emails to our members. So they are strategically working on a Made in the USA program where they're going to, um, around the time of, of the 4th of July, be creating collections and, and finding product um, in the site that is, you know, made in the USA. I mean, it's true, we do, uh, you know, we have a nice breadth of vendors that do have products that's made in the USA, but then we have vendors that are small to medium-sized businesses that, you know, may, you know, travel the world and have, you know, this painter that is painting these, you know, pieces of their designs in Italy. But at the same time, we do want to message people that are working 
just in the USA and um, hiring people that are just in the USA, like you said, Nancy, and you know, kind of call those out. So that's the first step of us kind of doing that. Um, which we'll Excellent. Start seeing, Thank you. We'll start seeing around Memorial Day and you know, Fourth we'll, of July. I mean, we'll, we passed Memorial Day. I'm sorry. Fourth <laughs> of July, and we'll continue doing that. You know, you know, we'll we'll try to find a cadence of doing that. Um, so it can be top of mind for our members that that is something that, that you know, we feel um, that's an important call out. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, all right. I think that um, about wraps it up. Thanks so much to Lindsay for sharing all of that great information with us. Thank you all for calling in. Thank you all for your questions. That was really, really great today. We will be back here at the same time next week. Next week, we are going to, again, have our CEO and founder, John Kaplan, um, come and talk to you guys. He would talk to you guys every week if we would let him, but we try to like give you know some other people opportunities. He's so excited about this platform. So he's coming back next week um, to talk more about Open Sky. Um, and so please call in, 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Think of questions for John. He loves questions. I'm telling you, he loves questions. He loves to answer questions. So come up with some really great ones for him. Um, so have a great weekend. Um, thanks for calling in again, and we'll see you guys next week. Okay, Thanks, everyone. Thank Thanks.